So. <clears throat> yeah, welcome to the stream today. Um, I'm working today on an issue that um, our current generator that generates um, endpoint specifications in Scala code based on open API specifications for the zero HTTP library um, is ignoring until now um, validation and somebody opens an issue for that says he would like to have this and we would like to integrate this so i'll be working on this today the basic idea is um, we pass out the validations from the open api json or yaml whatever and uh, <coughs> then translate this into zero schema validations zero schema is a library that we use for any kind of serialization over the wire and um, that comes with validation capabilities. I don't know if all the possible <coughs> zero schema validations are enough to represent all possible open API schema validations. Um, we will see that. So here's for an, a little example code from the one who opened the issue. Maybe I should zoom this a little bit in uh, so you can see we have here like this validate annotation uh, with validation min lengths so uh, deserialization would fail if the name has not a minimum length of three. This is the example here from from the issue. Uh, I don't know, is it actually given? Ah, yeah, here is it. Yeah, it's given in, in the, the example here as well. Uh, we can also take a look at the open API specification. Uh, Okay, so I think it's actually not in the API open API specification itself, but it's a part of the JSON schema validation. Let's take a look at this link. Okay, so we have here minimum items for arrays. I think, for example, this we can probably not do. I don't think that exists currently in Zero Schema. don't like this doc to explain to me what are all the possible things. Maybe we just do some Google search. Um, Uh, 
maybe we just look for the example. Okay, yeah, I think this uh, this website looks actually good. So we see here for string, we have min length, max length, pattern. Content encoding. Yeah, so I think this is nothing to do anymore with the validation. Um, so I think here it's for each type we can find the validation keywords. So we have number as minimum, exclusive minimum. Maximum, exclusive, maximum, multiple of. I doubt that multiple of exists. Integer is a subtype of a number. Okay. Uh, I meant that it exists in your schema, by the way. Mm -hmm. Object type. The following keywords are supported by object properties required. We have this already. Dependencies. Objects with value against. So these min properties, max properties are anyway for like some kind of dynamic objects, uh, which doesn't make sense in our static typed language where everything needs to have a clear structure in the first place. It's the same here, like where you check if properties start with some prefix. So I, I don't think we can actually do validation on objects at all because it somehow goes against the, the static nature of uh, Scala and the stuff we do. Min items, max items on an array yeah that seems okay unique items so basically it tells us it's a set contains array must contain at least one integer it's the same here like with the object mm -hmm. since we need to know the type of the, the array f from the beginning onwards. Uh, either we say it's an integer, then min, min contains, doesn't make any sense, right? Or is it, was it not the, no, the right one? So min item says I must set it at least two items. Can have at most two items, yes. But we would anyway have always like a type defined for the items of the array. Or I think when there's nothing defined, we default to string. So 
So this one here contains, this is I guess the one that doesn't make sense, array must contain at least one integer. I mean that's the same as when I say the item type is an integer and it must have, and it has min items, one. I don't know. And also what what would one do if the the items for the array is an integer but contains says string? It seems odd. I don't know. I think I, I will focus on on a core on a core set of validations that we will implement f first. So for numbers minimum exclusive minimum maximum exclusive maximum seems to be Easy multiple of I don't know if we can do that. Uh, string min length max length pattern should be also f all fine. For array min items max items unique items should also be fine. The one with the contains I think I would skip. items is already implemented but so there's also a minimum in items possible okay yeah maybe we do that one too formats yeah i don't know maybe we could also implement this with validations but mm. I would also skip this for for this implementation, I guess. Okay. Then let's take a look at the code. Uh, we have the serializable JSON schema. Ah, yeah. So I see we have here already the possibility for a pattern. Uh, let's do some some more. Min length max length minimum yeah maximum multiple of exclusive minimum exclusive maximum const mm. I didn't see that one I will not do this for now but there was uh, unique items was that the right one mm. yes unique items So now we have to migrate these values into the 
So this is like a very generic JSON schema specification that is only for library internals, but we have a JSON schema type uh, that is accessible by by users. That is this one here, and it has like so it's like a a, f a tree like data structure, and. Uh, So sorry, not a tree-like data structure, a uh, some type, a some type, and um, here we have now different different things. So, and here we have like a number currently has only a number format, and it probably needs then p something to like validations so what we could do now is we have two choices we could have just one field that is like validations and a, a collection of validations and they could be then different kind of validations or we could have dedicated fields for each of the possible validations. Mm. When I think about this, I think there was annotated schema. So this is already where we have the possibility to add some metadata. What do we use this for? Deprecated default content media type, content encoding description, nullable discriminator examples. What we put that into this structure, so validation is an annotation, or what we put this. directly to number, for example. So since not every validation is valid for every kind of, of uh, data representation, data schema, I don't, I don't know how to, to describe that. Um, I think we should limit the validations that we have that are valid for numbers to numbers. Therefore, I think we should not put this into the annotations. <coughs> and I would tend to make them separate fields. Yeah. So number is. Uh, Minimum maximum. Oh, by the way, that should be option, might not exist. Exclusive minimum, exclusive maximum. Ah, but I just realize Let's take a look at the docs again. So yeah, actually, 
so minimum maximum whatsoever they are defined for both numbers and integers so in yeah it's actually double here everywhere exclusive minimum exclusive maximum boolean is this right No, it's so exclusive minimum, uh, exclusive maximum is ah, okay. So it can be both exclusive maximum can either be a number that is the exclusive upper limit or it can have a maximum and an exclusive maximum which is true wonderful um, yeah let's go back to the code So which type should this have here? Should be probably either. As a boolean or double, one here also also needs to be double double Right, also up there. Ah, no, 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 here the type is right. It's an option of an ISO. Yeah. the order like this minimum exclusive minimum maximum exclusive maximum and then there is multiple of yes <coughs> and it will be similar for integer Yeah, 
just that it's here not double but long that looks good so Integer So here we take our our Scala schema type from Zio scheme from Zio schema and create out of it a JSON schema. So we need to read the validation annotations here. So we need here annotations and then I guess we do integer from validation so we say no Notations collect, and we only take this in the case that this is a seal schema annotation uh, validate. that contains a validation oh by the way I didn't zoom a little bit in it's probably nicer to read uh, yeah then we need this from validation Method uh, that's the wrong type. This is integer format, could be both format. Just extract from the chunk all the possible 
validations, yes, something like this, just that the types here are not really right. This is validation dot It's greater than and less than, and between would become both greater than and less than. Ah, but it boils actually down to this. To this tree-like structure. So. Predicate. Mm -hmm. Kind of got it. Just want to see what methods actually exist here on the validation. need something like a flattened out representation if I see this right so yeah where the pool is getting reduced So this this boolean pool predicate thing here creates like a tree like structure. So we have pool n, pool or and not. And Break that down. Into something that we can really check. So <coughs> I need like the <coughs> I need like the greater than and not just any any pool <coughs> any pool and here in the num type we can probably find out 
what kind of number we have here. Yeah, so int double float. But that shouldn't actually be a problem since we should not be able to annotate this with anything that we don't know already here. Yeah, so we have here already a short. So we know it will be like some validation of short. Yeah, but this probably also need means we need here some type parameter. Maybe so that we can cast or we can just do the cast here based on this type. Okay, but first of all, So we have a uh, case validation. And then we say if validation pool. something A and B when we just create simple validation like this one here for example it's bool leaf Okay, and or leave not, yes. I think we should make some assumptions. The first, assu first, uh, first assumption is that we should assume that there is only one validation annotation and that if I want to have multiple predica pa predicates I put this all in the same annotation maybe. Um, that would make our code definitely easier. So if I would assume that and then go up here and say uh, add option and then make is an option of validation of any yeah then I can say <coughs> validation so now validation 
match if there is no validation then I return exactly an integer with the format and all none things copilot and um, else we say Uh, well, is equal to so I don't think that exists already like some flattened out representation no so then we need like a method to flatten this out flat um, Value. Let's just put this here for now. Def flatten. say mm, it was it pool uh, dot uh, oops so where was this pool coming from validation pool that one Right, oh, no, this is value dot pool. Yeah, this one should be pool of any, then we can match directly on that one and pool dot. Or and I forgot to turn on my light. That doesn't return validation, but uh, pool. Oh, that's also not a pool. What we have, we have. Uh, so in in validation, we have a pool of a predicate of a. So we have a pool predicate of any any <laughs> yes so these pools we know now um, this can only be bool dot leaf or bool dot not yeah actually we don't want anymore do we
that structure is not so easy. <coughs> So, what am I struggling with? I know bool and both need to match. Bool or would be only one need to match. Actually, I think or can not be defined on the schema side. I think it only knows and it doesn't know or. Yeah, I don't see any any possibility for or here. Then I have two options. I can either ignore the or completely. So I can say, hey, sorry, I cannot do that. Or I treat it the same as end, which is not completely correct, but then at least the validation would be there at all. No. I think we just return your chunk empty. Or is not possible to model in JSON schema. So in the case of leaf, then this thing could be predicates. But what do we do is not. So if I have not min length is three. What is actually not min length? So min length. It's 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 just max length. So not is possible for 
min lengths and max lengths, not for matches. It's possible for greater than and less than because we have here duals, like there's no dual for for matches. I don't know if it's possible to invert a regex. That seems so, so complicated and crazy. I'm not sure if anybody would understand this if he is using this equals to yeah it would be not equals to but i don't yeah we, we don't support this anyway true optional control map either So for leaf, I think we should have here a flag uh, where not, which is a boolean. Uh, not, well, it's not, uh, not which is a boolean, and then we hand over here not. And whenever we meet a not, this is also not chunk of value, this is, yes, flatten and then the not is inverted. Yeah, that looks better. So we know here that this is the type, even though the compiler seems to complain for whatever reason. But now the IDE tells me, hey, you don't need to cast, it's already the same type. I don't know, I will just keep the, the cast here. Uh, So now we need to check something. So now that we say we in when this flag is set and we come to a leaf we would need to invert it but now first of all we want to only return like valid leaves and filter invalid leaves out how do we do that so we know that we have here predicates 
So we don't just match on leaf, but we say, or, or we could also do this on the outside and just keep here the value. So we would have all the values. Ah, but then we cannot uh, use the not to flip. No, don't do that. Uh, we do predicate dot So if there is a contra map, we want to actually validate the the leaf below that because we only change the like the type with the contra map. So we can take a look here, right? So we have a predicate of A, but we want to create a predicate of B, so we remap this, but the underlying predicate will still be either num or string or something like this. So in this case that we have a contra map of predicate and some function, what we actually want to do is we want to call almost no chunk of b but of bool dot leaf dot p this right No, Boolean predicate, eh, no, 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 in the contra map. Oh, yeah, there's another Boolean predicate inside. Yeah, no, then it was just P, it's right. Just P. Uh, so, but hand it over to flatten. Flatten P not. Yes, like that. Then we have the case we have predicate predicate string max length so Length. Then we say this becomes a chunk of this again. Instance of predicate of any, and then we have the same case. Mm, no, we have the same case, but we do it here if not, then this is not max length, but min lengths it's not int it's number greater than error
so so if not then it's yes then ah yes then or equal to that's actually true um So for ins and longs, we could maybe make this work because we could say we can have like a less than So this num thing represents like the number type, right? So it's like, it says, for example, we have an, an int or a long, and it has operations on it that can do mathematical operations based on two values of this number type. Um, and again here, what we could make this work if OpenAPI would have validations that are OR, but it doesn't. We can make it work for ins and longs because we could say something like uh, num dot numeric dot Greater than is less than or equals. So less than v plus one. Something like this would work. But we don't know, this could also be a double or a float, and then this would not work. So it would work for int, long, short, big int, big decimal. Okay, so let's do this. Actually called num type num type dot yes. 
so num type int type num at so for this it works we just need to call here this instance of int that would work Work for long. Yeah, it would not work. This is. Inverted float predicates can't be. Has exactly the same issue, but there are still things that work. Case num type short works. Decimal also doesn't work. Just for the case that there is no Oh I I I'm sorry I didn't see the chat. <laughs> uh
I am new to Scala, really struggling with the build tools. When I try to build stuff to run with Java, the Java it always fails. Ah, oh, yes, I, I read chat sometimes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, so if you want to build an application to run, um, you should take a look into um, what is the, the name of the SPT plugin called again? It's called <sighs> Give me a second. Uh, universal plugin. This one. So um, with that one, you can uh, build uh, different formats, and uh, you can. Um, just pack an application and it has like a, an, what is it, a shell script or a bat file um, that you can use to start your application. And I think it can also output um, Docker stuff or there's like some other plugins that are linked in the documentation. That's probably what you would like to have. I So f at work we use this always to to uh, to build our application yeah or oh sorry i think uh, maybe I, I no no I think oh no no it's actually the same plugin yeah okay. uh, that that's actually the the uh, the site where where the documentation starts but yes you you put it into uh, the plugins SPT and then the easiest way to use it is you call an um, SPT stage and that will put in your target folder under universal stage bin um, a folder that is called the same as your uh, SPT module and then you can <coughs> uh, run the, the shell script or bat script depending on your uh, operating system Windows or Unix to, to start the application. And if you would like to have like uh, in general it would not be too much to ask to uh, show this but um, I don't have anything set up where I could show you that first of all or at least not code that I could share and um, the other thing is that I would like to focus on on this thing here to 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 finish this and it is not so easy for me to follow through uh, there are also like a lot of data structures that I don't know and uh, it's also getting late at my place <laughs> so uh I, I, I would really recommend you to, to check the documentation from the plugin. It's it's actually not that hard. But if you still struggle, uh, I don't know. Uh, you can also hit me up on on the Zio Discord if you want to. Uh, and I could help you out uh, maybe tomorrow.
Yeah, I, I also don't say you should use Zio. It's just like if you if you want to to contact me, like I'm most responsive if you hit me up on on the Zio Discord, or, or you can find me through the Zio Discord and and DM me on Discord, and I will y usually answer. Uh, so where have I been? I, I will continue with this now. Um, Num greater than it's greater than then you create again a greater than oh, yeah actually I don't need this so just like that is okay case integer type is long type yes um short yes i guess I have now all the stuff that I need flattened out. So now there can only be predicates left and not oh, and also not any kind of predicate, but also only predicates that are string or num, which I think are the only ones that I can handle anyway. Ah, wait, I forgot the, the string matches case with the rack X. Mm. We can do that one too. Oh yeah, uh, I should probably put some, some Discord somewhere. Well, you can also find the Discord link on co.dev. Uh, but matches matches are wonderful. So back to where we called the function that we just wrote in the first place. So now we have this flattened out predicates and um, it is theoretically possible that there are, that there's more than one predicate of the same kind. So we could have two mins or two maximums for, for integers or something like this. And the question is then which one to pick and I would say just pick the first one. So this is not absolutely foolproof but on the other side if you add some validation annotation and you say it should be min 5 and min 3 I don't know what you expect probably that it's always min 3 uh, but then why don't you just write min3, you know? Um, and to to find now out if I have more than one, which one is the smaller one, 
in the minimum case and which one is the larger one in the maximum case or no in the maximum case you probably also want the, the min one because max a max b when a is smaller than b then you would probably like to take a i don't know seems to me for me way too complicated if somebody really can make a case for that we should implement it like that you can open an issue later on and you can change the implementation but i don't think it makes any sense so uh, instead i will just take what did went wrong oh yeah Yeah, I don't know. IntelliJ doesn't like me. I don't care. Uh, now maybe, nope. Maybe it's just okay. I don't know, maybe it's just okay. So in this case, I have now my flattened out structure and I can call flattened and I collect the first one that is of type predicate num uh, min is greater than value v so i guess copilot should be good enough to generate the rest for us or at least give us some support We, we cannot generate exclusive minimum actually thinking about it yeah no we, we when we get the requirement for exclusive minimum then we can then we can build it but the validations that we uh, can annotate on our data types there we don't need exclusive minimum because if you want exclusive minimum then uh, you just uh, change your value by one and then you have exclusive minimum so when we generate exclusive minimum uh, will just always be none So, and now it complains that here uh, min and max um, and multiple of is also always none because it doesn't exist. Like we, we don't have such validation in zero schema. So here it complains that V is of type any, uh, but that doesn't need to be the case since we get like uh, integer format we know that it's either an int or a long that we can interpret this value as so it might even be a short but we can always cast a short to a long or to an int sorry so that's it's not a that's not a problem so we just do here if Yes, just like 
like that. Yes. Wonderful. Now we have also no more issues here. Actually, I just realized we don't need to make it like this since we we define the validation not generic, but it's always a long. So we can always just get a long out of this value. Probably we can even use this num type for it. Let me see. Num dot numeric. Yeah, there it is. Too long v. Yes. That's even better. Less than max. Oh, it's actually the other way around. This is exclusive maximum and exclusive minimum because it's not less than or equals, but it's less than and greater than. It's the other way around. Yeah, now we got that. And this method here needs to go somewhere else. I don't know yet where. I can just put it here for now because we need to do the same thing. I destroyed something somewhere. Ah, I forgot. Exclusive minimum and exclusive maximum are not options, but either of uh, options of either, because it can also just be Boolean in the JSON schema. Actually, can also just do it here. I must admit, this is more work than I expected. Let's go. This curly brace belongs to what? Ah, yeah, okay, there's one missing. this for integer and integer format but we need the same thing for number which I guess is right above here no. so number object number def Just 
just copy it from down here. It's more adjustment than writing it new. I guess that's already it. Oh no, uh, this is not too long, but too double. Yeah. Now, here we have only here for the schema of shorts adjusted it to to create like a json schema with, with validation information and now we have to do the same thing for the other number types Now the whole thing for string. <coughs> so string actually has already pattern option. Is this anywhere used? No. But we also need uh, max links option of int and min links option of int. a little bit easier here and say we have default values none Um, 
uh, that actually we also forgot for the number things we need to like transform this to the serializable JSON schema. So the serializable JSON schema is just like a representation that is not so type safe, but easier to uh, transform from into JSON. Here's the number format. That's not right. It's just exclusive minimum. Maximum, exclusive maximum. And the same for integer. Uh. Ah. Yeah, that's actually true. So here we always have double. But maybe we mm, should we should we have always double and then transform integer values into double, but then No, I think that's not a good idea. I think this should be an either. So long and then here it's just like what no. map uh, right. Oh, but that then also means this is not an option of either boolean double, but an option of either boolean either double int the double long. So that one. Wonderful type. Thank you, OpenAPI, for the stupid idea to make exclusive maximum sometimes a number and sometimes a boolean. This means then we call here dot map map right. Nice. Right. Oh, 
left. Oh yeah, we have other places where we create JSON schemas. We should also add default values here because on the other places they can always be all none. But here where we create a string when it's actually a string in this case we want to call JSON schema string dot from validation Here again, we want to flatten the validation and then say, well, first we look for a pattern. R is already a regex. Uh, this do yeah that's what I actually want so it creates like a string representation of the regex for it yeah so it looks good Links is in links. No string.
in Scala 2, you can actually also just write pattern instead of pattern apply and the compiler will not complain. But we are also cross compiling to Scala 3 and in Scala 3 you get uh, complain if you would just write pattern with auto apply. <coughs> So now I think we are probably done with the direction of from zero schema to JSON schema. If I don't find anything here anymore. Oh yeah. Here we should also add default values to none Ah, but no, wait. So this is now. The direction where we have like. Where we read. In. Uh, a JSON schema from from some JSON string. And we want to. Generate our internal JSON schema representation with the information how to validate. Therefore, we definitely need to add here the, the validation stuff that was coming from the outside. Mm. So here, In the case, that we want to create a number, the number format, yes, and then comes yeah, something like that almost so from this schema we want the minimum but the minimum is of type either double long but we know here it's a double so if it's a long, we could call it a double, else we want to keep it. Uh, but it's exactly the wrong way around. It should be this way. Yeah. That looks good. That's not right because the maximum can also be a boolean, so it is a map of a map of fold, right? Or not? Here we have now a double or long. So don't write 
beautiful. Good. It's an option of an either boolean or double. So we map the option. Then we have here inside the either. And we want to get back an either of boolean double. But this is an either of ach, it's the wrong it's the wrong order. This is uh, Exclusive minimum. And here, this is now. <coughs> yeah, now I got it. So if we have like something that is a boolean or a double or a long, then we want to get to get to get it to a double. If it's only a double or a long, we also want to get it to a double. That looks okay. Mm. Uh, yes, this is using the schema. Um, but the part that I'm implementing right now is not zero schema, but this JSON schema, and this is like a JSON schema representation that exists only in zero HTTP. Before we were using zero schema, but this one here is now no zero schema. So here it will look almost the same as the code above. Uh, yeah, to long identity. Is that right? Uh, yes. Are you a zero user? Make make way for summer. I, I will just call you summer. The name is too long. Guess something messed up my imports. Probably the formatting. Yeah. Some more here is your schema dot validation. Yes. to string yeah. oh, wonderful uh. 
Yeah, we still need to do the same thing for string. Uh, the default string case is this one here. So Here we want to add exactly min length, max length. I think that's it because pattern was already there before. Yes. That looks good. What I'm not sure about is if here for this. For this, either the schema is doing the encoding and decoding correctly by default, or if I need to create my own custom schemas, and I think it's actually the second one. And I will just do that because then I'm sure it will not, uh, it won't fail. Uh, so in here I will implicit var double oh, long schema is this the right one No, it's pretty sure fallback that I want. Fallback, yes. So the difference is if we use the default either schema um, that would for a left of one for example result in a JSON that would look like um, left and the value is one. And that's not what we want. Therefore I create my own or my, my custom schemas here. That copilot is actually good at these things. Yeah, I think that should be good enough. So now we say we have a fallback of schema boolean or double or long schema, which is a fallback of double or long. And we do some mapping because 
this is based on this fallback data structure, but the fallback uh, yeah can can be uh, converted from and to and either. Um, the thing with fallback is that it has the possibility of both, where either does not have the possibility of both. Uh, but we should also not have both values or, or a value that matches both schemas here anyway. Um, so probably a zero could be passed as a double or as a low. For example. But I, but I think it, it's probably okay like that for now. <coughs> so now, that we, <coughs> in our JSON schema structure, have now all the information we can have for validation, uh the the actual goal of the ticket is or of the issue is that um we have this um no what is it called uh code again uh, forgot it's, it's somewhere here next to this one yeah, uh, endpoint gen, that one that generates endpoint definitions out of of, of uh, open API definitions and part of the open API definitions are the, use, uh, are the schema definitions. So <coughs> we now need to check how does the the so schema objects that we get in here look like and then generate this uh, yeah this code representation which is just like uh, a representation of a Scala file as a Scala data format um, that we can then later on render. But so far, we don't have the, the concept of annotations, which we need now. So here, this field one probably needs now also annotations. So do we go for one annotation or a collection of annotations? I think a collection is okay. Uh, annotations. Is a chunk of annotation. Well, I guess we used here list for the, the other places. Yeah. So and annotation doesn't exist yet. I guess I guess we just leave it as a string
Mission. And another one. Yes. Wonderful. So now we added some more constructors to hand over either one or multiple annotations. And this we should not now be able to use here. I guess. Okay, so we have this now on multiple places where we check the schema. Mm, one to produce a field and the other one to produce like a path codec because we have uh, like uh, an HTTP path definition that looks something like like this get slash uh, I don't know API and then we can say string yeah, something like that So this would be like a path that matches on a get followed by an API and then a string extractor with the name version. And I guess in open API slash JSON schema it would also be possible to do validations on the length of this uh, of this string extractor, but we do not have any API for that because this is not using JSON schema. Therefore. Uh, I will just ignore this for now. So, but uh, query parameter is the same thing also, just for ignoring. But what we can do is let 
we open the browser. So we could actually go and create a new issue or two. Uh, endpoint query codec validation for max slash min max and Open API supports such. and it also seems fitting for our API. And back to code. So Actually, we want to have here default value uh, annotations. Yeah, so I don't have to hand it over here to the other copy methods. So it's okay. This could maybe be improved to generate a string type with validation. But currently we don't generate anything. Mm, no, I don't think that's the right place to put the validation. And I will also delete the comment. Or Yeah, I think so. Because I know the validation will come uh, at a different place. And uh, I don't think we need it twice. So I think we only need to validate fields. That the other thing would be something like a top level string. I'm not even sure if that's possible. I don't know. Now it, <coughs> now it gets interesting. So we have minimum, exclusive minimum, which might be a boolean or a long, <laughs> maximum. Do 
use of maximum and multiple of we will not use anyway. Oh, exclusive maximum. And now there are annotations. So, to calculate the minimum, we need to know, okay, so first of all we could have both minimum and exclusive minimum. If we have both an exclusive minimum is not a boolean. Which one would we pick? We would pick a smaller one. min is equals to if exclusive minimum is defined and exclusive minimum dot get is oh, it's equals to left of true. So if there is an exclusive minimum defined that is a left of true, then we increase minimum by one, else we return the minimum. If exclusive minimum is defined and is a right, then mm. oh, by the way, do we actually want to? calculate minimum no we want to calculate exclusive minimum because that's what your schema understands so it's exclusive min and that is then If exclusive minimum is defined and exclusive minimum is left, then the minimum is exclusive. So the value of the minimum is exclusive. So 
so this is the exclusive region. And if it's the inclusive minimum, then we need to add one to make it the exclusive minimum. Yes. Uh, but wait, is this right? No, so it's the exclusive minimum when this is defined. And the exclusive minimum is left, then we want that exclusive minimum, but else if exclusive minimum is defined and exclusive minimum is uh, dot get dot is right so it's a uh, actual value then we use exclusive minimum dot get dot to option dot get and else it's minimum map plus one The type is now not nice. This one should stay an option, so it's also get. So now exclusive minimum is an option of long. Yes. Fair. Exclusive maximum. Yes. Fair. Uh. Yeah. That's what I want. What do I? Mm, yeah, yeah. So I say I have exclusive minimum and maximum. If both is defined, then I want to create. Schema dot value dot dot validation dot validation dot Than min like this. 
that but all of this needs to be wrapped in an annotation so at co dot schema dot validation no not validation dot annotation dot validate And we are here in the place where we have a scala int. So we say here int it's in all of these. But we want to have this as a string. And there's no annotation. Uh, okay, there we, we say uh, colon colon nil colon colon nil. So we create like a list where this is the first element, and in the case we have either minimum or maximum, it's just nil. So, and then this is the annotations. Annotations. of string ah okay we have it wrapped in this annotation thing that's okay dot map uh, code dot annotation yeah ah, now So, a lot of monkey work. Uh, oh, I missed something. This needs to be interpolated string.
was not quite right. It's like that. I should probably do this off stream. It doesn't seem to be nice at all. What is this? I this copilot thinks it should differ here. I mean, it shouldn't. Should it? No. for the string. Do we need min length and max length for UUIDs? On the other hand, I don't know. I will just implement it. Validation UUID, that's correct, but what comes afterwards is not. This should be more like dollar max length dot map so max length. validation 
this. Next links. And this is S dollar Yes. That's it. Or no, there's nothing and end. That's not right. Just say if <coughs> max length is empty and end and length is empty. So in the case that both are empty. Our list of annotations is just the empty list. Else, use the same logic as above to generate the so correct validation annotations. That looks better. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. And again, and over the annotations. didn't make strings out of it.
Yes. Something missing. Map type. Did I write this? No. Don't think we need that here. So annotations. Okay, so now <coughs> we generate the right code representation, Scala code representation in Scala code for things that have validation. Now what we need is <coughs> in the actual code generator to print the annotations at the right place. So when we take a look here, field, uh, should probably focus much, yeah, much right. So trade body trade def name colon. Okay, so here. Notations would be yeah, and once more notations. Well name, well name type. So now it's in the code generator. Let's see if this all compiles. Nope. Does not. That something old didn't clean my console. Found next 
flanks require predicate n. Yeah, okay, I think I'm my, my brain is not capable of, of uh, fixing this stuff today anymore. Uh, I will do that tomorrow. Maybe on stream, maybe off stream. Uh, anyhow, I'm, I'm out for today. Thank you and goodbye.